So it is live now. Let's see if people can hear me. I'm going to check if I can hear myself. Hello, can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Let's just wait for a little bit more. Okay, can you hear me? If anyone is here. Maybe because everyone is busy studying today. So that's why there's not a lot of people coming in yet. That's okay. Just gonna share news in the group just in case.
Okay. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Miss Naja and today I will be presenting um, the topic Exam Anxiety 101. How to keep your exam anxiety under control. So I know there's a lot of you guys that are going to go through examination next week. So I know some of you might be nervous, some of you might be chill, some of you might um, be calm, relax, some of you are studying while also listening to this. So hopefully, uh, hopefully everyone can uh, gain something from what we are sharing for today. And yeah, I see the numbers going up. So yeah, hopefully you can start now. Okay, exam anxiety. What is exactly exam anxiety? So exam anxiety is a psychological condition in which people experience extreme distress and anxiety in testing situations. So every time exam, they feel distressed, they feel stressed, they feel emotionally unstable, they feel a lot of anxiousness, they feel restless, they feel like throwing up. So all of these are some of the symptoms of um, exam anxiety. So exam anxiety, if too much of anxiety, it could impair learning and also hurt um, the test performance also. So make sure that you know what is exam anxiety and you need to know either you do, uh, do you have it or do you not have it. So now we look at the symptoms. So the symptoms of exam anxiety. So there are three different symptoms. First, we look at the physical one. So the physical one, we can see sometimes we get sweaty, sometimes we get shaky, our heart beat really fast whenever we think of exam, whenever we are going through exam. And we have dry mouth sometimes. Sometimes we feel like even fainting. This is like the worst case scenario. You might feel fainting. And also nausea. You feel like you're sick in the stomach also. And sometimes also you feel like butterfly in the stomach. You feel quite nervous and um, this could be some of the physical symptoms that you might experience if you have exam anxiety. And the second one, we look at the behavioral and cognitive. So behavioral is in your behavior, how you behave, how you act. So if you have anxiety, exam anxiety especially, you might have tendency to avoid. You, know, you might have avoidance, you might skip class or you might not be interested to go anywhere, you might even drop out of that course or even drop out of some of the class. So uh, it could be indicating one of the uh, exam anxiety symptoms, avoidance. So the next one, you might be reliant on the substance abuse. So for example, you might rely on drugs or you might rely on alcohol to cope. And some of us sometimes even eat excessively, not eating enough, so that could indicate some of the behavior symptoms also. And the cognitive part, uh, the cognitive part, it related to the memory, the concentration and the negative thoughts, the focus. So a lot of the cognitive part uh, related a lot with our, uh, our decision making, our, um, our thoughts, our uh, our how how do we uh, how do we concentrate and focus on that kind of stuff so when you have exam anxiety you have um a word uh you have like pretty pretty interactive memory pretty poor concentration on focus and a lot of negative thoughts something like that so emotional symptoms if we look at the emotional symptoms um yeah, sometimes we do get depressed, we feel really low, we feel like sometimes we feel worthless, we feel a lot of different negative feelings. So that indicate we are feeling depressed well, when we think about the exam anxiety. And sometimes due to the anxiety, we also feel like we have low self-esteem, especially when we feel like uh, the subject uh, we are not comfortable with, we don't really feel, conf uh, feel confident in doing that. So we might have low self-control also. And sometimes you also feel anger. For some reason, we do feel sometimes feel anger whenever we think of exam or thinking of um, having to go through all the revision study. Um, 
and it could indicate the exam anxiety symptoms. And the last one, feeling of hopelessness, especially when the when it's closer to the um, to the date of the exam, we slowly feeling the feeling of hopelessness creeping by. So these are three different symptoms of exam, three different categories of symptoms of anxiety, exam anxiety. So what causes exam anxiety? So now we have known the symptoms. Now we look at the causes. What causes the exam anxiety? First, we look at the fear of failure. So fear of failure itself. Why do we feel um we we might feel fear getting B, fear getting C, fear getting D, fear getting fail. So failure is the um the standard that we put to ourselves. For some people, failure might mean B. For some for another people, failure might mean C or D or E or F. So failure, each and every one of us have different interpretation of fear. So uh of failure. So interpretation of failure. So first uh the causes of anxiety due to the fear of failure, fear of getting B, C, D, E depends on our own expectation or the lecturer expectation or the you know, your parents expectation your family expectation a lot of it involved in the fear of failure perfectionism like i mentioned before uh, each one of us have our own interpretation of failure so maybe people who are perfectionists they could only see a uh, or if they don't get a b c d is considered fail for them also so perfectionism could be the reason for fear of failure. Self-worth. Also, sometimes we feel um, failure itself could cause our self-worth. Sometimes we put our academic achievement as, as our self-worth. So when we don't get that academic achievement, so it kind of like uh, make us second-guess our self-worth at the moment. Do we deserve this kind of thing? Do we deserve, do we deserve anything? If we don't get this thing, so fear of failure itself, especially in the academic part, it can be the biggest causes of exam anxiety. So now we look at the second one, poor testing history. So this is one of, uh, one of the things that maybe most of us have experienced. Maybe some of us never even experienced yet. Uh, so poor testing history, we have. Uh, previous experience of failing or previous experience of getting bad grades or feeling uh, we have um, experience of uh, not have uh, not getting the result that we want. So it's one of the reason. Uh, so sometimes we might have our own expectation and we don't meet that kind of expectation. So it caused us to have this kind of like bad experience in a way. So it can cause um, anxiousness every single time we are going through the same uh, same thing which is exam we are reminded of the past reminded of the the grade that we have that we never even achieved we reminded of the bad grade that we we have received in the past so it can cause some sort of trauma and anxiousness and also Sometimes it could lead to negative thoughts as well and second guess our own ability, whether or not we are going to get the same thing again, something like that due to the poor testing history. So we did have history of failing or getting bad grades. So those are one of the causes of exam anxiety. So the third one is pretty simple, unpreparedness. So you're not prepared. Uh, the causes of exam anxiety, maybe you are not prepared. Maybe you are not studying enough. Maybe you are studying on the last minute, very last minute. You study like few um, few hours before the exam. You study the night before the exam. Or you study, you don't even study. You rely on, the, on your memory. Or you even have like limited time, um, limited time to study. So... Hi, Miss Ila. Hi, Dr. Usni. So, Dr. Usni also joining us. Hi, Amin Ajlan. Okay, so yeah, the third 
reason uh, the third causes of exam anxiety is unpreparedness. Didn't study enough, maybe you study less me, or also you have limited time to study also. So that could cause some of the exam anxiety. So now we look at the biological cause. So what is the bio biological reason of having the exam anxiety? What is the biological explanation? So the adrenaline. Adrenaline could cause uh, the fight or flight mode. So we, when we enter stressful situation, and in this situation is the exam. So our body is what I need to be alert and ready. So the adrenaline is keep pumping in our body. So uh, we are in either fight or flight mode at any moment, especially during the exam. And for some people, the adrenaline can be too excessive. So when it's excessive, it could be the flight response where it's, it's difficult and impossible to focus on exam. They have to regular. Uh, they have to constantly choose whether to fight or flight. Fight or flight. So when the pop of adrenaline is too much for some people, it could be really difficult, really impossible to focus, to concentrate, and to just go through the whole exam situation um, in relaxed mode. So that's the biological explanation. So the mental explanation, the mental causes, what caused the exam anxiety? So the student expectation itself, the belief system. So sometimes uh, you might have also have the similar experience. I can't do this well. I I will fail this too. There's not enough, in, uh, enough time. So sometimes we do have some sort of negative thoughts that we, um, we say to ourselves. Um, especially when we have, uh, like we look at before, maybe we have poor testing history, maybe we are unprepared, maybe we have fear of failure. So because of this, uh, it can cause some mental causes, which is the belief system. We believe that, okay, maybe I cannot do this. Maybe I will fail. Maybe I don't have enough time to study. So we always feel fearful of those things happening to us. Maybe it have happened before. Maybe it never happened before. So we always be anxious, we always be fearful of that situation. So in situation where we feel like we have no power over it, it can be in, uh, turned into learned helplessness, especially when we have no control over that situation. And um, this is the learned helplessness is happening during the exam time itself. Uh, so it can be one of the mental, it can explain uh, the mental causes of exam anxiety. So now we already know some of the symptoms. Now we already know some of the causes. And we have seen the biological and mental causes. So how about you guys? If you are here now. So do you feel familiar with some of the symptoms? Uh, do you think you have exam anxiety at the moment? Do you think you have it? And if you think you have it, what are the causes? that might relevant that might be relevant to yourself so what do you think so if you have the answer you can write in the chat box so do you feel like you have exam anxiety if you feel um you have some of the symptoms you can let us know in the chat box so yeah so now we know the uh, now we know the symptoms, we know the causes. Now we are looking into the exam anxiety management. So now we are going to see how we can manage the exam anxiety. So to manage the exam anxiety, the first thing is to minimize the perfectionism. The second one is to limit some of the negative thoughts. Number three is getting enough rest. Number four is preparation and number five is relaxation so we are going to look into this step one by one how to manage this exam anxiety so the first one is <clears throat> minimize perfectionism so how do we minimize the perfectionism itself so don't expect to be perfect so sometimes we are still human so when we are human, we know that sometimes they are high time, sometimes they are low time, sometimes we are excellent, sometimes we are average, sometimes we got bad also. 
So don't expect ourselves to be perfect all the time. So even though we are study really hard, even though we understand the whole thing, sometimes thing has things happen. So when things happen, we might not get what we wanted, and that's okay because we don't have to be perfect all the time. So uh, like like I said, we all make mistake, and that's okay. That's really human of us to make mistake and learn from the mistake. So just knowing that you've done your best and also just know that you have worked hard, that's all that matters. So you need first to be aware of your own standard. So what is your current goal currently? Are you trying to achieve A? Are you trying to achieve A plus? Are you trying to achieve A minus? Are you trying to achieve B? Are you trying to achieve C? Are you trying to achieve just not fail? So it depends on your own standard and know your own ability. That's the biggest thing. Knowing your own ability and setting the standard that is very realistic. Try to make it very realistic. For example, if you know that, um, if you know that you, um, maybe you get B last time. So maybe this time around you can achieve, try to achieve A, um, or even A minus. It could be some sort of progress, even though it's not a big progress. But at the same time, any sort of progress could be really, uh, good also to take note of it. So be aware of your ability. Be aware of your own standard don't set too much of unrealistic standard and try to set something that you can be comfortable and you can be confident with. and yeah be kind to yourself try to be kind to yourself understand your own limit understand your own ability understand that you are only human you're only human you're only a student and you're only you are still undergrad student maybe there are like um, also some postgraduate student I'm not sure who was joining us today but hopefully you can try to be kind to yourself and um, make sure that you understand uh, uh, yeah embrace your own abilities uh, and practice self-forgiveness for example if you did have bad testing or result in the past or if you did really badly in the past try to uh, practice self-forgiveness and this time around, try your best to do whatever you can. Try to try your best to work hard. And um, that's all that matters. The result is something that are out of our control. We cannot change it, like the marks itself. No matter how hard uh, we try to change it, yes, now we still have time because the exam is, uh, the exam is uh, going to be next week. But during the exam itself, after you have done it, the only thing you can do is just pray for the best because at the end of the day, those results are not depending on you, not dependent on you. It's something that you cannot control. And same thing goes to what you have achieved in the past also. Those things are the things that you cannot control and you cannot change anyway. Those are in the past. Try to practice self-forgiveness. So even though you have done pretty bad in the past, try to forgive yourself and there's always next time. And it, it is proven that you have next time, which is this time around. Your exam is next week, so you still have next time. So even though you have your exam next week, you still have next time also, next, next time. So don't worry about it. We all make mistakes. The only thing you can do is try to be, uh, try to do your best. And yeah, now we are going to the negative thoughts. How to limit some of the negative thoughts itself so sometimes you do have some anxious and also defeated thoughts especially when our exam is coming and we're not feeling fully prepared so these thoughts some and uh, some things like i'm not good enough i didn't study hard enough or i can't do this so this have very negative connotation to it so it's not helpful in any way. I'm not good enough. Is it helpful for yourself? No, right? I didn't study hard enough. Is it helpful for yourself to, to say to yourself like this? No, I can't do this. Is it helpful for yourself to say this? So, so far, these kind of thoughts are really unhelpful and pretty negative also. 
So we can slowly replace that kind of negative thoughts into a healthier thoughts. It doesn't have to be positive. It doesn't have to be, I can do this. That No, it doesn't have to be totally positive. It can be healthier thoughts, more neutral one. So I can do this. Yeah, you could use it. I know the material. Yeah, to some extent. Yes, you can do it. I studied hard. Yes, you can use some of it. But uh, this is the healthier and more positive connotation, but also helpful also. Okay, I can do this or I can try to do this. I know the material. I have learned about this. I studied hard enough for this. So this is more helpful thoughts. Uh, this is some of the things that you can say to yourself before the examination itself. So some of the more helpful thoughts also could be I can't do this, but maybe I can ask. So this is more like a, it's not too positive. It's pretty neutral also. I can't do this, but maybe I can ask some of my friends. Maybe I can ask my lecturer, something like that. If I can't do this, at least I have tried. So this is what you can say to yourself uh, during the exam or after the exam. If I can do this, at least I have tried my best to do this. If I can't do this, at least I have tried to show some steps that I I know. At least I can show some of the things that maybe I remember quite a bit. Some things like that. So uh, the third one, I'm not familiar with this, but at least. Uh, so this is something that you can say also during the exam itself. Maybe in exam, I can do better. So some of these things are the things that you can also say to yourself during the exam or after the exam itself. It can be more helpful to reduce some of the exam anxiety so something that you can remind to yourself that it is okay there is actually next time maybe next time i can do better i'm not familiar with this but at least i have gained some knowledge i can learn more about this something like that okay this is one of the more important thing also have enough rest so i um personally i am I was also an undergrad student a few years ago, so I do understand the need to have enough rest. But at the same time, it is really hard, especially when exam time is coming and you feel like uh, if you're really anxious and you feel like if we have 24 hours, I wish I can add more 10 hours, uh, 10 hours more so we can have like 34 hours to study. But at the same time, we do have only 24 hours in a day. And within that 24 hours, hopefully not all. Uh, hopefully all of you are not using that to the maximum capacity just to study. So hopefully you have enough rest in order for your brain to also regulate some of the things that you have learned as well. Very very important. So a good night's sleep will also help your concentration and memory. Scientifically proven, yes. And also finding rest in between studying can really boost your concentration and focus also. So uh, maybe you can focus on study for like um, two hours straight, three hours straight. But at the same time, it would be really, really helpful to have a rest in between. And maybe some of you can, can't even focus for five minutes. So what we can suggest is the, the Pomodoro technique. To help with you, uh, to help with some of us, okay, some of us have the tendency to hyper focus for like five hours straight. Some of us like only five minutes, and then five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, and then one hour break, five minutes, one hour break. So the Pomodoro technique can help with, um, with like different range of, uh, focusing. Okay, what is Pomodoro technique? So a Pomodoro technique is a method to stay focused and uh, keep us mentally fresh also. So how to do the Pomodoro technique? So first is pick a task mm, and uh, relevant to our um, uh, our situation now is pick, pick a subject or pick a cause or pick a topic. So set a 25 timer or even you can like pick a, uh, pick a past year question, something like that. So if you already pick it and then set the timer, 25 minute timer. 
So for 25 minutes, you work on the question or you work on the topic or you do revision on that topic, whatever task you pick, do it for 25 minutes and set the timer. And then after the 20, uh, 20 minute timer set off, and then you stop, take a five minute break. And then after five minute break, you repeat again, 25 minutes. So 25 minutes, and then ten -ten 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 -ten. okay, five minutes again. Until you get four, four repetitive step, four set of 25 minutes working. So it seems like 25, 25, 25, 25. Then combination, you get one hour. So after the four, uh, after the, after the four run, um, after the four run of 20 minutes, 20, uh, after the four run of 25 minutes, and then you start to add 15 to 30 minutes break. And then repeat. So it's one of the technique that you can try also to help you stay focused and stay mentally fresh and also have some break in between also because the break itself is quite important steps also. So, if you are up to this, be sure you have the timer with you also. So yeah, uh, this is something that you can try for uh, for doing revision, or doing um, passive questions, something like that. The Pomodoro technique. So preparation. So preparation is one of the most important thing to reduce the exam anxiety itself. So studying early, and uh, try to study early until you feel really comfortable with the material. Please do not wait until the night before. Maybe you can still study the night before because, um, yeah, I do understand because I was a student also. So I was one of the people who also uh, study until the night before. And I was the person also, I, I did have experience of only start to open my book few hours before the exam. Yes, I do have that experience also. I'm not prou proud of it, but um, I do understand. And um, in, the, in the past, I also have the tendency to not sleep until I feel okay, until I feel confident. But uh, because I don't feel confident, I never sleep at all until the exam. The, so that's not a good thing. So hopefully, all of you guys have a better uh, better routine than mine. That's what I learned in the past. The rest and preparation itself. So if you are unsure how to study, please ask your friends, ask your classmate, ask your lecturer for help. You still have time because I know the exam start on 1 August, but um, some of your paper also like have some gap in between, right? So you still have time to ask your friend, to ask your classmate, to ask your lecturer for help, or you can form study groups, something like that. So hopefully um, uh, you can have some off support system for your exam studying as well. So yeah, be prepared is also can all boost a lot of confidence as well. So yeah, preparation. Okay, deep breathing exercise. So if you are here, we are going to do some deep breathing exercise. Okay, hopefully you can hear this. Oh, okay, I think I can hear it. Okay, inhale. If you are sitting, make sure you are sitting comfortably and then we try to do this together.
when you are exhaling, make sure that your mouth is really pouty. Like, make sure you really exhale because it can really help with the regulation of the breathing itself. So, hopefully, if you try this, whenever, uh, whenever you are, wherever, wherever, and whenever you are, you can try during your revision during your studying during the exam before the exam you can you can try to apply deep breathing every single moment it can really help to bring that relaxation and also bring some of the calmness that you needed at, at the moment as well And you can practice this every single time you feel really stressed or feel overwhelmed. The breathing can really help. So even though it, it sounds quite simple, just breathing, we breathe every single day, you breathe every single moment. But at the same time, deep breathing, when you did, when you do it consciously, and, you, and when you do it with purpose, it can really really help to bring that sense of calmness. To bring that sense of relaxation also. So yeah. So yeah, deep breathing is one of the things that I think is the best to do during study, before exam, during exam, every single moment, whenever you feel overwhelmed or feel nervous. Yeah. So yeah, even without the video, uh, you can oops. Even without the video, you can also try to have some of the deep breathing exercises also. Yes, also relaxation method can be also really, really helpful. So even though study is important, yes, it is important. But at the same time, having some relaxation time can be really helpful also. Because for example, we have 24 hours a day. We sleep for eight hours. Uh, we sleep for eight hours, so that left us with um few hours. Uh, plus minus, we have ten hour, ten hours. So we spend how many hours to study, and how many hours to re uh, relaxation. So if you have ten hours a day to study, you are not going to study ten whole straight hours. It's gonna be really damaging. So please don't do that. Please have some relaxation. Please have some rest in between. So, uh, relaxation method. You can choose any method that you're comfortable. Any method that uh suitable for yourself. Some of us like to bake, like to cook. Some of us like to play music. Some of us like to paint, draw, or um have some sketches, write. Some of us like to play sports. Some of us like to listen to music. Some of us, uh, some of us like to walk in a park or just walking in general. Some of us like to talk, maybe to friends, maybe uh, to a counselor. Yes, counselling. Talk to a counselor could be really helpful also. And yeah, talk to a friend, have lunch with with friends, and just hang out with your friends. So, uh. Choose your own relaxation method. Something that can uh that can bring fo your focus on the here and now. For example, if you're playing sports, your mind, your focus, your concentration, your attention is all uh co going to the sports itself. So you're not too burdened with the study, study, study. So you can also try to let go of that for a moment and just focus on here and now focus on what you are doing at the moment if you listen to the music you listen to the lyrics you listen to the words listen to the beats if you are talking to your friends focus on the topic of the conversation make sure you don't speak about exam when you want to have relaxation try to not bring the topic to the exam not about studying not about just talk about something in random something that uh something of your interest or Something that can pretty much um, distract you from that studying mode. Because if you are having studying mode for 24 hours a day, it's not going to be really helpful. 
So have this moment of relaxation every single day to have some resting time and so just focus on the here and now. Focus on that moment. If you're playing music, just focus on the music. If you're cooking, focus on uh, focus on what you are doing, what you need, what you shape into uh shape the food into some of that. So um so you have some relaxation method. And what are your choice of relaxation method? Uh, if I can know, maybe you can reply in the comment what is the relaxation method that you are currently doing because I know currently you are studying so hopefully you don't study 24 hours hopefully you have some relaxation method also for me personally I like to listen to music and also I like to uh, have some window shopping just walking around looking at the, uh, you looking at the shops something like that and also I like to watch sitcoms also so that's my method of relaxation. So if you have your own method of relaxation, that can be really good. If you don't have it yet, make sure you try. Uh, make sure you have the trial and error to do that. Also, can be really good in the long run, not only for study but also for like daily life. Also, just in general, it, it's gonna be really really good to have some relaxation method of your own choice. So. What to do? What to do if you are feeling panic before the exam, the night before exam? So first, learn how to relax. Just now, I already show you the deep breathing. So hopefully, slowly try to practice the deep breathing. Slowly try to allow yourself to feel the relaxation so that whenever you are in the hall, sitting on the table, Try to read the instruction of the examination. You can slowly calm yourself back down. So learn how to relax because some of us, some of us have different way to different ways to relax. Also, some of us can do deep breathing. Some of us can do uh, uh, this fist clenching and release clenching and release. That could be really helpful to relax also. And some of us just try to distract ourselves um uh with different things uh sometimes we can like knock on our table something like that find a way to relax yourself and try to distract yourself from the negative thoughts try to be prepared also before the exam and avoid, avoid working too close so uh know when to close your book when to, uh know when to close all the all the past year exam all the questions and something like that put it away Try to not focus on that the, 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 the night before the exam. And please eat something before you feel sick. Please eat something even though you are not feeling the appetite. But hopefully you can eat something to make sure that uh, you gain the, the, uh, the needed um, nutrition for the day. So that you feel the energy to, uh, to get you through the exam as well. So. Also, make sure you know exactly when the exam, exactly where the exam is. So, uh, I know that now you're going to have the face-to-face -face exam. I think some of you have um, some sort of trauma from the face-to-face -face exam from the previous, ex previous semester. So, make sure that this time around, you know exactly when is your exam, what time is it, what is the date and you know where the exam if you don't know the hall don't know the location please look at it before the exam time before the exam day please know exactly where it is so that you are not panicking on the day itself so no this one is very important the information of your examination so yeah the night before the exam make sure everything is ready Make sure you already pack your bag. Make sure you already put everything inside your, uh, inside your bag, inside your, uh, whatever you need it is. You need your pen. You need your water bottle. You need your, um, I don't know. The, the, make sure you have everything in your bag ready to go. So, what happens if you are panicking during the exam? 
So what to do during the exam if you panic? So first, you try to make yourself comfortable. Even though you start to panic, okay, what happens is you try to enter the hall and just by entering the hall, you feel like your heart beat fast, you, you feel sweaty, you feel like your, your hands are really cold, you feel like you might throw up. So first thing to do is try to make yourself comfortable. Take a really deep breath. Sorry. <clears throat> Take a really deep breath. Practice the deep breathing that I showed you before. Uh, deep breathing. Uh, whenever you feel that like your heart beat really fast and you feel like throwing out, you feel like butterfly in your, in your stomach, try to take a deep breath. Try to uh, learn the relaxation, the clenching of the face, release, clench, release. Deep breathing. Okay, then you sit down. Try to make yourself really comfortable in the hall itself. Okay, now you're comfortable. You try to focus on everything around you and not be in your thoughts. Rather than your thoughts, try to focus on your surrounding. The question itself, read all the instruction, um, try to look around at the examiner, know where is the fire exit. This is also important, the fire exit, where is it? Try to look around. If you feel really panicking, try to look around. Try to focus on your senses. The sense of, uh, the sense of sound, the sense of smell, the sense of um, sight. Look at what you can see. Focus on the examiner. How many are they? How many are people? How many people in the hall? Can you see your friends? Focus on your senses. Try to not focus on the thoughts itself. Try to not focus on the negative thoughts. Try to focus on what is around you. And then make yourself comfortable. So, yeah. Now, now you know. Oh, sorry. Now you know what to do when you are panicking. First thing first, just focus on your surrounding. Try to make yourself comfortable. Take a deep breath. And then, now you test. You have studied. Now you are in the hall. So the one thing to do is just try to take your time to read your question and instruction carefully. So if you feel panicking again, try to pick question that best relate to the revision that you have done. Pick the question that you feel really comfortable to answer first, that you feel really confident to answer. Do that first. And then you start to plus, uh, plan your answer. So, next you decide either you want to focus on the difficult question first or you want to focus on the easy question first. So, this is how you plan on how to answer your um, exam questions in order to reduce some of the planning itself. So, this is one of the things um, that you can do, you can try to do if you feel panicking during your exam. And what you can do if you're panicking the night before the exam. So this is one of the, uh, this is some of the tips itself. So yeah, I can leave you with three words. Practice makes perfect. This is true for so many things. Sensitize yourself to exam situation. So um, be familiar to the exam situation. And the third one, and the third one is please take care of your health. So even though the exam is really important, but at the end of the day, your health is the most important thing yet. So the most, the number one priority is the health itself. Please take care of your health. I know study is, um, I know study is important, but at the same time, make sure you have the needed rest also. So yeah. So now I, I see, I did see sensitize yourself to exam situation. So how to sensitize yourself to the exam situation? How exactly to do that? So sensitization means we slowly, gradually expose ourselves to the stressful situation. We're gradually exposing. So the first is might be, uh, the first stage, uh, look at this. This is a pyramid. So the most stressful situation is the actual exam itself. That's why it's on the 
top of the pyramid. So the first stage is the least stressful situation. The least stressful situation would be study on the subject alone or with some of your friends or some of your classmates also. So this is the first steps to sensitize yourself. Next, the next stage is study in the space when there's few people around. So to get more familiar with the what? Uh, okay, something is wrong with my other device. So the second step is to slowly introduce yourself to the exam situation would be oh, let me open this slide back. Okay, so uh, this, the second step to slowly introduce yourself to the exam situation is study in the space when there's few people around. Maybe like around three to four people, something like that. Study in that kind of space when there's actually some people around. So the next step, uh, the third step, oh, the third step is actually study in the space when there's more people around. So graduating from the three, four people, now we are entering into like maybe six, seven, eight, or ten people. Study in the space when there's more people around. So you can get familiar to that kind of exam situation. And the second last stage is do mock exam or pass year in the space when there's more people around. So once you kind of like already identify where's the space when there's a lot of people around, you try to do some of the mock exam, or maybe you try to do some of the passive question in that space, in the space when there's people around, so that you can be more familiar with the exam situation, especially the face-to-face -face exam situation in the hall. There will be a lot of people around. So, is to or passive or some revision in the space when there's like around 10 or more than 10 people around you. And I think you can achieve that kind of space, uh, maybe in the library, maybe in the some of your uh, classes, or you can do a really big group study or something like that. So try to find a space when you can study, especially when there's people around, to slowly sensitize yourself, to slowly introduce yourself to the exam situation, so that on the actual exam day itself, you are not feeling shocked, you're not feeling... Uh, you're not feeling too much of the pressure of having people around you as well. So slowly introduce yourself like this. For, so from the bottom of the pyramid to the top of the pyramid itself. So it's one of the things that can be really helpful. So hopefully you have enough time to achieve this kind of experience, this kind of exercises as well. So yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's all from me. So, thank you so much for listening and hopefully all the best for your exam. I'm not going to say good luck because not everything is luck. But at the same time, yeah, all the best. I know you can do this and you know yourself if you can do it or not. So, make sure to believe in yourself and yeah, you, have, you still have time to study. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Don't worry too much. You still have time and make sure plenty of rest and also make sure you have like a very healthy schedule healthy routine to go through as well so yeah all the best i will post the score on the chat box hold on a minute yeah um and yeah by the way you guys if you know some of you that haven't attended yet but need the score run they can also watch this video, watch this rerun on the Facebook page. Um, we will close the, okay, already, I already shared the form, this form. So make sure you fill in this 
this form for score run. So if you know anyone who could not watch today, you can watch it again in the Facebook Live and you can fill in the score run form because the score run form will close on Sunday. So you have today, you have Saturday and you have Sunday to do it. So make sure if like if there's like some of your friend or some of you that couldn't attend for today or like miss some of this the earlier part you can always watch the rerun and you can fit in the form as well i will also be sharing in the group whatsapp also if you haven't entered the lighthouse group whatsapp be sure to oops be sure to join our group whatsapp also so yeah i think that's all from me thank you so much for joining us today and yeah thank you adi good luck for your exam all the best you're going to do great so yeah don't forget to fill in the score right? because if you forgot we cannot do it after sunday so yeah peace thank you for those as me so yeah scoring google form in the chat box or in the whatsapp group Thank you, Asim Oma. All the best. Okay, I will be ending this session. So just in case you haven't heard, you can watch the rerun and also uh, watch the rerun and also fill in the form again. We will close the form on Sunday. If you miss the early part, you can watch the rerun also. If you didn't, uh, if you know anyone who need the score run, uh, just tell them to watch this, then enter the score run. They can watch the rerun on the Facebook. Line. Thank you, Kalaniti. All the best. Okay, bye bye, everyone.